There's two uh, welcoming speakers, Mr. Clint Evans, the state conservationist for Colorado from the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, he's joining us in person and then online, uh, Matthew McCombs, state forester and director of the Colorado State Forest Service. So I'll let y'all figure out how you're doing your remarks, but right. you're here. So I think you start. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good, good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Clint Evans. I'm the state conservationist for the USDA's Natural Resources Conservation Service here in Colorado. And I'd like to introduce, I've got three of my staff uh, here also today. So Ms. Cindy Einsfar is over here on the right. She's our public affairs and outreach coordinator for NRCS, the state of Colorado. We've got Mr. Frank Falzone, our NRCS state forester. forester. And this Miss Maria Baumgartner is a resource conservationist here out of the Denver Metro office and the Longmont uh, field office uh, for us here with the local staff. So, and both Maria and Frank, I'm proud to say, started with the Jefferson County Conservation District as uh, foresters and weed techs uh, here in the local county. So their their local roots run back to our soil and water conservation district partners, which is pretty exciting. And then you'll also hear from Miss Susan Stein. Uh, here shortly about the EQIP program. So she's going to go a little bit in depth about agroforestry and opportunities in the EQIP program. So glad to have Susan uh, here with us as well today. So just a couple of quick remarks uh, for myself. Uh, NRCS has a lot of opportunities through both technical assistance as well as conservation programs through the Farm Bill funding. So the Environmental Quality Incentive Program that Susan's going to visit with you about here this morning is our flagship conservation program that has opportunities to do both urban as well as rural agroforestry type projects uh, around the country. So keep in mind, EQIP is a great funding opportunity and then NRCS and our soil and water conservation districts have the opportunity to provide conservation technical assistance in partnership with our uh, state forest service partners. You're gonna hear from Mr. Matt McCombs here shortly. So Matt, good to see you on uh, online this morning and uh, looking forward to his comments. Another program that I want to mention is the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, and the RCPP program is one that requires a cooperating entity, so it could be a partner like the State Forest Service or the Southwest uh, Agroforestry Action Network. If they chose to be a project sponsor, uh, you all could get together and just design a landscape scale or a watershed scale scale type project to do agroforestry within a given region or potentially on mul multiple states. So just one something I wanted to plant a seed out there that the Regional Conservation Partnership Program would be a great opportunity to have dedicated funding for agroforestry projects in a given region. And then the Inflation Reduction Act, Cindy put up a nice flyer over here kind of covering the IRA. Uh, it's provided additional funding above and beyond our general farm bill appropriation. So for the USDA NRCS at the present time, the Inflation Reduction Act added an additional $20 billion to support conservation implementation through the Environmental Quality Incentive Program, the Conservation Stewardship Program, or CSP, as well as the Regional Conservation Partnership Program uh, as well. And RCPP has substantial amounts of funding off organizations under the Inflation Reduction Act. So for instance, this year, it's roughly 400 million. Next year, it's 850 million. In 2025, it is 1.2 billion. So the reason I wanted to put the plug in for RCPP, that's all the one caveat I want to put on that is that that's all based on Congress not rescinding any portions of that funding through uh, the federal budget negotiations and appropriations bill. So there is a chance and there is some talk on the Hill that certain aspects within Congress do want to uh, take Inflation Reduction Act funding and roll it into the broader Farm Bill umbrella because the 2023 Farm Bill negotiations are currently ongoing. Um, I would anticipate that we will see an extension of the current 2018 Farm Bill and most likely see a 2024 Farm Bill uh, get funded uh, next year. So just a few funding opportunities that we have. Lastly, I just want to mention two more things. One is anytime you're planning agroforestry projects in a given landscape, please be mindful of that, the general ecology within the landscape or the watershed. And I'll use Eastern Colorado as a prime example, where we have a lot of short grass prairie intermingled with 
uh, annually tilled cropland. So be mindful of we don't want to go into short grass prairie and just start planting hundreds of trees, right? So that's not good for upland birds and other species that thrive in those grassland type landscapes. So be, be willing to involve Colorado Parks and Wildlife or your state wildlife agencies or NRCS and our biologists or other partners so that we kind of take a more holistic conservation planning approach when you're looking at agroforestry projects. And then lastly, I just want to say we're hiring. Uh, we are trying to hire nationwide for NRCS. We're trying to hire 3,500 conservation professionals across the country. In Colorado alone, we're trying to hire an additional 90 NRCS conservation professionals, plus working with a lot of conservation partners like the State Forest Service and our conservation districts and the State Department of Ag to expand our capacity through cooperative contribution agreements to build out. So if you know someone that has an agricultural degree or is currently studying agriculture, natural resources, biology, or engineering, and you think they might have an interest in working for NRCS or USDA, please feel free to reach out to myself or Cindy or one of our staff. Our, our email addresses are just our first name, dot last name, at USDA.gov. So feel free to email me, clint.evans at USDA.gov. Would love to talk to budding conservation professionals or even folks that maybe have retired from another career and are looking to just work part-time. We have an ACES program that we can bring folks on board and utilize that knowledge and expertise uh, to help us implement our conservation program. So with that, I will wrap it up there, Dana. And would you like me to introduce Matt or would you? All right, well, I will uh, introduce my colleague and friend, Mr. Matt McCombs, the state forester for the Colorado State Forest Service. And Matt is a uh, veteran and served our country as a combat medic. And so really proud of Matt and honored to work with him here with the State Forest Service. And he has prior experience with the US Forest Service and working for other members uh, on Capitol Hill. So Matt, I will turn it over to you. Hey, thanks Clint uh, for that uh, nice introduction and for your opening remarks. I get so excited uh, when I hear from Clint and some of our other uh, key federal partners here in the state of Colorado about the immense opportunities that are in front of us with regards to some of the most significant investments in history as it relates to conservation uh, and agroforestry. So uh, thanks, Clint. It's great to see your face, uh, even though I, I'm seeing it from five hours away. So again, my name is Matt McCombs. I uh, am the director of the Colorado State Forest Service and your state forester. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the third annual Southwest Agroforestry Action Network Conference. I apologize for not being there in person. Uh, my summer family plans have me uh, stuck, is the term here in my talking points, in Crested Butte this week. Uh, boo boo for me uh, uh, in my family. Uh, I can tell you with a a historic amount of snowfall followed by some uncharacteristic rain. The wildflowers are banging up here in the high country. So if you have an opportunity to make it up here, uh, not necessarily the crest of it, but anywhere, you'll, you'll find yourself pleased with uh, the amazing response to all that moisture. Uh, so the Colorado State Forest Service, you know, we've long supported agroforestry in this state, uh, thanks in large part, uh, as already acknowledged, to Donna Davis, who advanced agroforestry initiatives here uh, in Colorado's Plains communities for just under 40 years, 39 years before retiring last month. Uh, and I can tell you, Donna, we are going to miss you and, and yet your legacy uh, of service to the state and to producers across uh, and communities all across the Plains uh, will be endure for many, many years. You know, specifically, we uh, have a proud legacy of helping communities and ranchers and farmers uh, with planting living snow fences and windbreaks and obtaining seedlings from our, our nursery, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in just a second. You know, uh, coming into this role, uh, prior to this role, I had spent almost uh, 15 years with U.S. Forest Service as uh, different positions all across the country. Um, and so a lot of my focus was uh, on those uh, backcountry landscapes and those large uh, forests that, that, that we are so fortunate to have in such abundance here in Colorado across the West. Um, but part of this role has allowed me to engage and really grow in my uh, understanding and appreciation for agroforestry, uh, where, where trees meet our producers um, and, and benefit their production as well as uh, a bunch of other 
um, ecologic benefits. And, and so now as I drive across the plains and I see those uh, uh, tree rows, and it, uh, it just warms my heart to think that the State Forest Service in partnership with, with, uh, with you and, and the folks that you serve uh, has a piece of that, uh, a piece of that action. Uh, and so it's something I continue to grow in my awareness and, and grow um, really my enthusiasm about what's possible as we think about working lands, this concept of a continuum of working lands from that potentially that eighth acre uh, backyard all the way uh, um, to, to an 1800 acre ranch and, and how we can use trees um, to increase production, trees to uh, help uh, our wild neighbors uh, and, and trees to have to continue to provide the provide all of the amazing benefits that they do. So I want to highlight a couple of exciting things for you. I'm hoping you're aware, but I can potentially provide some additional context. You know, I spoke about the nursery here just a second ago, and in the last two legislative sessions here in Colorado, uh, we've received uh, just under 10.4 million dollars to upgrade the C uh, the CS the Colorado State Forest Service uh, Seedling Nursery. And uh, our intention is really to double, if not um, you know, quadruple the amount of seedlings that we can produce, acknowledging there's a significant demand for reforestation, afforestation work here across the state, and uh, certainly uh, not just on private and state lands, but on federal land as well. So we see these investments in combination with hopefully some partnership uh, with our federal uh, agencies as a way to really uh, establish Colorado as an epicenter of reforestation and afforestation, planting trees where we know uh, they need to be to help Coloradans uh, and, and to continue our conservation legacy. Uh, well, with all those resources, uh, there's an enormous need for people. I was I have no idea if you, were, you could see my face when Clint was speaking, but um, we're all hiring. Uh, everyone in the conservation space is trying to draw in anybody, frankly, that's uh, interested in participating in, in one of the most exciting times in conservation in this country, as well as uh, in, in this state, the largest investments across the board. And so uh, in, in addition to investing in the nursery, uh, the Colorado legislature passed a bill in the 23 session that expanded, uh, that's designed to expand the forestry workforce in Colorado. Uh, in partnership with the community college system, uh, high schools and industry representatives. We're hoping to develop and grow internship programs and put resources on the ground uh, in, in um, community education centers that will boost uh, those folks' opportunities for forestry related careers. So if again, if you have young people that are thinking about their future, uh, amazing opportunities are uh, coming into play as it relates to uh, education and advancement in the conservation space. I love mentorship. I am a product of mentorship. So please ensure that uh, if you have anybody interested in that in, in our business, that you send them our way so we can um, give them all the context information they need to make the right decision to join the, the, uh, the uh, conservation team here in Colorado. In addition, I just want to highlight a couple other really exciting things, especially about the urban and community forestry. Uh, program here in the state of Colorado, which I know is important to this group. Uh, we just recently received $4.875 million, so just, uh, just under uh, $5 million for uh, in Inflation Reduction Act funds uh, for the US, from the USDA Forest Service to help plant and care for trees, in particular in disproportionately impacted communities, those uh, that have been sort of not given the same opportunity to, to benefit from uh, all of the amazing things that trees do for communities. So you can expect to see grant funds available for projects uh, and, and additional workforce development later this year in our urban community forestry programs. Um, we're working with a consortium with a collection of folks to uh, advance a proposal under the, um, the larger uh, award opportunities that exist through the USDA Forest Service and are hopeful that we'll receive additional funds that will take our uh, urban and community forestry program to the next level here in the state. Um, and, you know, finally, I just wanna close with how much I appreciate the fact that you have action in your acronym uh, in, the, in the title of this conference and the organization, uh, because now is the time and we are the right people. And we, I don't think we will ever potentially see, at least in our professional lives, uh, the resources that we see in front of us right now, which, um, has a lot of expectations as well as a lot of opportunity. And so I, uh, I, I join you in this call for action uh, that to, to help these resources 
uh, move through the system and get to the ground so that we can continue to improve people's lives uh, from backyards all the way to the back country uh, and all the farms and ranches in between through uh, the remarkable relationship between uh, trees and agriculture. Um, I encourage you to reach out if you're uh, if any of the comments that Clint and I have provided have piqued your interest and engage with your local uh, state forest service office, uh, your local conservation district, um, and and allow us to help you and help your community uh, bring trees and, and um, improve the health of the forests uh, surrounding your communities. Um, and while Donna won't actually be there to answer the call, since she is now enjoying retirement life, uh, we have uh, an, an ever-growing cadre of foresters and natural resource professionals here to assist you, and we look forward to working with you going forward. Thanks again for letting me join you virtually, um, and uh, I hope to be with you again sometime in the future. And with that, back to one of my favorite people on the planet, Dana Coelho. Hi. Awesome.